Yeah, so today we are going to take you guys through a day of a photographic safari with Kevin Dooley. Okay, this guy right there. <laughs> All right, Kevin. So, so maybe I, I guess the the question is, you know, like what do we do in the morning? How we wake up? How we start the day? What time? Um, is there breakfast? Is there anything else? You know. Um... Well, let me just kind of take you yeah. through the whole day, basically. Um, you know, depending on the time of the year that we go, let's see, I think your next group is in October. So, you know, that's going to mean that in South Africa or in Botswana, it's going to be their springtime. So we're going to have days where, you know, um, the sun's going to be coming up pretty early. Basically, we get up around five, uh, quarter to five. The rooms have like their own coffee makers and stuff inside. And if people want to have some time to drink coffee and relax before we actually meet in the the foyer of the lodge they can get up a little earlier but we have sipo who's like the the nighttime guard he calls everybody on the each room has a phone in it and he calls everybody and wakes them up at uh 4 45 to 5 o'clock and then we actually will go to meet in the main part of the lodge where we have like Almost like yeah, I think this is the part of the lodge right, right there, right? What? That's the part of the lodge. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that is the part. Exactly. Yeah. Where we have like rusks, which are kind of like um, biscuits. And then we are scones. Then we also have cereals and things like that and coffee and orange juice and, and uh, just kind of a light breakfast. We normally try to leave the lodge by 530. The lodge in South Africa and Botswana both are located i mean we can see wildlife the the minute we get into the safari vehicle so there's really no point in us leaving before the sun comes up unless we have like a special place we're yeah. trying to get to and so we will head out and generally you know um we try to keep all the middle seats in the safari vehicles empty so depending on how big the group is we'll have two or three vehicles and we work together we don't necessarily go to the same places, but we stay in radio communication because that way, if one of us finds something, we can radio the other vehicles and uh, it just increases our chances of finding really amazing sightings. And so we will be out on safari uh, the whole morning. And generally, depending on what we find, we could get back to camp anywhere between 11.30 and one o'clock. And we pack with us um, like French press coffee makers, hot chocolate, tea, and uh, we make fresh homemade muffins that we bring along with us as well. And so we will stop at some point and have, you know, like a snack and enjoy that and talk about our morning and then we'll continue on. The we also do a full day, some you know, on most of our safaris where we pack a breakfast and a lunch and we just stay out all day. The nice thing about this area is you know, we can go off road, and so when we see wildlife, we don't we're not stuck on the on the main dirt roads, we can actually you know drive in yeah, the bushes to get to the animal. Yeah, sorry, to but a lot of times, like just to drive to get to the animal, that took over an hour, maybe longer, right. Because it, these reserves are huge, right? Can, you know, <laughs> and there's no paved roads everywhere. I mean, there's oh, some paved yeah. roads, but yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, well, the thing is, is like, so it depends. I mean, if we get a radio call for a sighting, it could be 10 minutes away. It could be an hour away. You know, we just don't know. And so we kind of analyze it and talk like, oh, man, it's a really good leopard sighting or cheetah sighting or whatever. And then we'll we'll kind of head towards that sighting. And normally when we get a, a radio call for a sighting like that, we don't stop a lot. We, we'll just make sort of a, a direct route because we don't want to lose the sighting either because the animals may, you know, obviously we may move around or whatever. And, and so generally... Um, you know, when we pull into a siding, we will, it's it's kind of like a combination of the lighting, where the animal is located, 
you know, how easy it is for us to get in there. And uh, we, we just pick different angles depending on all of those things. Sometimes we'll move the vehicles around a bit. So that way, you know, everybody gets an opportunity to get a really good uh, view to photograph. And we spend as much time there as we can or as we want to. And so when we come back to the lodge in the middle of the day, we have depending on what time we get there, normally we have a huge brunch. So people have an option, they can order either a breakfast or like a hot breakfast made to order, omelets, French toast, you know, bacon, eggs, whatever. Also, they will often put out like lasagna or some sort of a, of a savory item to make it, you know, a combination. You of just gotta be careful and, and watch for monkeys. After that, they'll steal your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> they will actually you know, they climb up on the rafters in the lodge and and uh, they they're really smart and they actually know when the people aren't paying attention and so by the way that elephant right there is right yeah. in front of the lodge uh there is a big water hole the lodge and, and uh, we often go down there and photograph the elephants and stuff right in front of the lodge but anyway um so yeah the monkeys will watch the people and if they feel like you're not paying attention they'll jump from the rafter onto the table and basically fill all hands mouth everything you know with whatever they can get so after that we can take a nap so uh, we often will do like a photo workshop or I will help people if they want to work on, you know, editing images, those sorts of things. Or people can just take a nap, take a shower or whatever. And then we have high tea, usually around 3 to 3.30 in the afternoon. High tea is going to be, you know, snacks, um, teas, coffees, juices, things like that. And we generally will do that at 3 and leave at 3.30. And then we stay out until dark. And dark at that time of the year is normally around 7.15, 7.20-ish, something like that. And once that happens, we will start working our way back to camp where we'll have dinner at around 8 o'clock. Um, then after dinner, we usually try to get to bed by 9 if we can pull it off, just because it's a long day. And, you know, if we get to bed by 9 and get up at 5, we can still... Yeah, so that was later. one thing where, so, I mean, it was just yeah. constant. Like, you know, you wake up, you get ready, you eat maybe a little something, you go out shooting for a couple hours, come back. It was just constant. You're always on the roll. You get back to the lodge at night, you eat dinner, you pretty much just go to sleep. Like dump your cards to a computer and then go to sleep because you have to wake up early in the next morning. But you're looking forward to it. It's like you don't feel tired. But oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got to remember that I have uh, established incredible relationships with these lodges. We've been using them for these lodges for many years. And so we get a lot of special... Um, special care so we spend a lot of time out photographing and that's the whole thing is like even though maybe the lighting's not you know uh, as good in the middle of the day we still get such incredible oh yeah i, I have this one chase uh, lion chase and, i think I, I saved over here please i thought oh here it is okay yeah well, right here that I'm that? right I now that. Yeah. like two juveniles that's yeah amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but everything happens so quickly like it, you know it's like shooting birds you just got to be ready constantly for like those five ten seconds of action you never know yeah by the way um just this last se season the, uh, those two lions there um have really matured a lot since the last time you saw them and i actually saw it a repeat of this same thing but they were going for a warthog same because they, they crisscrossed well. i've got images <laughs> and I, and it seemed like no and, and it you know usually seems like they were actually be, lazy like it doesn't crazy. look like they did 100 <laughs> percent they they weren't no. quite hungry enough <laughs> you know. um Remember, they were laying under those trees, and they're like, oh, there's but some zebras, we'll give it a Even try. if you analyze it, the, the zebra's kind of yeah, looking at um, them, it doesn't react until they speed up. <laughs> but yeah, we can maybe do uh, analyze some of these like um, specific animals later. That would be a good topic for next videos, where we focus on one animal, and maybe we go through that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. we can talk about the different species. You know, um, South Africa, 
oh man, there are so many species that we photograph there. And Botswana as well. Botswana is really amazing for leopards. Oh, th this and guy here again. So, right? you know, we kind of have, yes, that's a leopard. Yep. Um, of course, that's in South Africa. But uh, just the same, um, you know, both locations kind of have special uh, things about them. So... Um, it's, it's just amazing. Now, Botswana, our itinerary is quite similar. However, something that uh, changes in Botswana is where in South Africa, we've got that water hole at the lodge. In Botswana, we have a water hole that's about eh, 20 or 30 minutes away from the lodge. It's actually a photo hide where you put your lens at ground level. And so a lot of times we'll do a morning game drive and then they will drop us off at the photo hide during the middle part of the day when the elephants water a lot. And they'll bring our lunch right to the photo hide and drop it off. And we just stay in the photo hide, have our lunch in there and photograph the wildlife as they come to water in the middle of the day. And then they usually pick us up around two o'clock. We go back, to, <clears throat> pardon me, go back to the lodge in case you need to gather anything you know, batteries, CF cards, whatever. We'll have a quick snack and then we head back out around 3 to 3.30. 3 yeah, I'm excited about that. Can't wait, so, you know. Oh man, it rocks. It's so rock, you know, it's amazing. Oh, I remember that. Those lions, they, they we call that lipstick when, they, when their faces <laughs> turn completely red when they're eating. We're like, oh, look, the lions. Yeah, they, have they totally lips. don't care. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh no, they um, don't care. And then one thing I want to mention too, not, not only the, the, you know, there's such a, you know, like abundance of wildlife. Um, I mean, you get photographic opportunities everywhere. The clips you see here, they're all kind of, they're all my clips from the one trip I did. And you could see the variety and I was shooting both video and photo. So in total, I have about like 20,000 images from the safari, but I also have a few thousand of, of great video clips. And a lot of times you're shooting in a vehicle that's, maybe moving, you know, kind of working with other people, kind of give them space, um, you know, because, you know, once you pull out the big guns, you, you really have to like work as a team trying to capture everything, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we do, you know, we definitely do. Um, you know, there, there's so much space in the vehicle that people really have incredible opportunities to, to, to move about, you know, you can actually see there, you know, so it's, it's open all the way around. Now, Botswana, we don't have tops on the vehicles because some of the terrain we drive through, you just can't drive through it with a top. It would rip the top off. But in South Africa, uh, we do have the tops. And so you get a little more shade with that, but it's open all the way around. So yeah, the, the opportunities are just amazing. I'm looking at some of these videos, just, you know, even though I go there so often, man, I just, yeah, I, I get really so have to, to process see. them. I'll be yeah. back. <laughs> That is amazing stuff. Yeah. And remember in Bo in South Africa, we have two species of hyenas. A lot of people don't realize that, but there's the spotted hyena and there's the brown hyena. And the brown hyena, to me, they remind me of, they look like little werewolves. They're so amazing. And uh, of course, the spotted hyena, everybody's very familiar with, you know, they see them on TV and stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of hyenas in that area. No, no. So it's just amazing. It's like a really a portfolio building trip. Like you'll never see this <laughs> this oh. amount of animals. I mean, it'll take you a year to go through everything, you know. Especially if you should like, yeah. <laughs> well, everybody makes. I was gonna say everybody makes fun of me because I, even though I've been reading safaris for fifteen years, I'm still shooting like twenty five to thirty thousand mm -hmm. images a week. You know, of course, as you know, I'm a wildlife fanatic but um i just love photographing the wildlife it's and and the opportunities yep. are yep. so amazing so so um I, I guess for the last um we have some question coming uh, i guess a big question is wh why did you choose pmg you know uh, which products would work for safari and, and you know basically just why choose pro media gear sure well there's a lot of reasons why. Um, first of all, I love you guys. You guys are amazing. Um, we have so much fun. We laugh. We get great photos, you know, personalities. We get along. It's, it's just, you guys are absolutely amazing. Secondly, um, the gear you make is such high quality. And, you know, I've been a professional photographer for over 40 years. And so 
probably like a lot of people, I learned the hard way. If you buy inferior gear, you know, like tripods, uh, gimbals, any of those sorts of things, it, it, it breaks. And so eventually you spend just as much money as you would buying something that is really top quality. And so I wish I had had the knowledge back then that I have now. I probably would have saved a lot of money in purchasing top quality gear. The other thing is I find that your gimbals, and I've used a lot of different gimbals, are so smooth, so fluid that I have no interference when I'm actually panning or following birds or photographing animals where I need to follow through and stay with the animal as it's moving. Your gear is just incredible. A lot of times we were like kind of stalking the animal or the leopards in the tree, kind of shooting high up. There's only so much your shoulder can take. And you know, if you take the camera off the, off the animal, you can miss the crucial moment where it's, you know, jumping down or hunting. So, so that's why it's important to, to use a gimbal or, or some support device to kind of keep your camera aimed at, True. at the animal. True. Also, it helps, you know, obviously vibration reduction. You get sharper images because you, you are, we are shooting at super high um, frame rates sometimes, maybe not so much bigger animals, but especially at night too, it's, it's really important to support the, the you know, um, the camera or we're shooting with super long uh, lenses. So it's just a very useful tool, especially on a safari. Exactly. You know, it is amazing how much light we can get if we do throw those uh, cameras on a gimbal and, and utilize, you know, the camera's capabilities, even when it's almost pitch dark. I, I photographed a leopard fight, um, this last uh, time in Botswana, and man, it was pushing dark. And I, I had a 120, my Sigma 120 to 300 lens. I was shooting at 2.8, but you can imagine those leopards are fighting, right? So fast shutter speed is vital. And having a steady hold for my camera. Yeah, some was, of the best it, it really photos I got, and I, you know, they're probably like in the morning or late at night. I mean, you get the golden hour. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, well, that's when the light is so, I mean, you know, we're always looking for those images that yeah. are unique and special. And when you've got that special lighting, it really enhances your opportunities to be able to get a photograph that really shines, you know, does well in competition, is unique and different. And so, plus, it's just so beautiful that time of day. There's something about the feeling of that time of day, which encourages you just want to keep shooting. Oh, my thought, I just really so like beautiful. to be out there for sunset. <laughs> That's not much exactly. sun rays, but <laughs> exactly. yeah. That's a little different. Okay, so I guess in closing, Kevin, um, you know, how do people find you? Uh, how to get in contact with you? Yeah, um, basically, it's EGB Photo Safaris, and it's spelled I D U B E Photo Safaris, I D U B E. P H O T O safaris. Yeah, it's kind of up there on the top left. There you go. Yeah, and it's it's just dot com. But Facebook is under just Kevin Dooley, D O O L E Y. And um, actually, I've been posting a lot of images from Africa. Um, I'll be speaking this weekend in Nashville to um, the Professional Photographers of America. So if any of you are going to that, uh, my program is on Tuesday morning at 10. And I'll be speaking on how to use uh, creativity to enhance your life. Congrats to all that, Kevin. I mean, it's, yeah. So, oh, so I guess you just got to keep the fire going. And, and I see always in your, like whenever I talk to you, you're full of energy, full of passion. I mean, you really love what you do and it, it really shows. And I just want to say from my personal experience, like being out there with you really kind of, you know, it's not just shooting and stuff. It's like, like you said, making jokes, you know, building friendships and it's just fun. just fun being out there. We're, you know, we're only here on this earth for, you know, a number of years. So, so do something special, get out there and, and shoot, you know, if you can't do a safari, do something else, but do something big, <laughs> you know. All right. So let's, uh, let's maybe wrap this up. Let's see if there's any more questions. I think we're good. Um, if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to me. It's just Tom at PromediaGear.com or call in and just ask for me. Uh, I'll always call back, so leave a message if anything. Okay. Uh, Kevin, it's IdubiPhotosafaris.com. Or we got the phone number here again. Well, I think it's easy to look up. People will find us. All right, so let's check all that. And then uh, with that, we thank you and we'll see you soon. All right. We'll do another one of these in a couple of weeks. So, I can't wait. Okay. All right. Thank you, Kevin.
Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. All right. Talk to you Take soon. care. See you. Bye nice now. to see you.